Hello, my name is Brandon Enright, and tonight I'd like to show some tricks for manually repairing non-manifold meshes in MeshLab. So this is a model by Carl Hoff, and this is a bunch of puzzle rings that Carl has designed, and he's put this neat little retainer part um, and so each one of these is each one of these discrete things is one puzzle ring, and he's got this retaining part to keep them all together. And the issue is that when Carl opens this file, it, this STL file in MeshLab, or excuse me, in NetFab, it gives him a little exclamation point telling him there's a problem. And when he tries to upload it to a 3D printing service, they say it's not printable; it's not a manifold mesh, and it requires human intervention to to actually print. Um, so I want to show actually what the problems are with this mesh and how to fix it. So I don't want to go into too much detail about what a manifold mesh is, but the, the really short version of what a manifold mesh is, is a manifold describes a real physical object that actually makes sense, but just sort of the outer perimeter of that object where everything inside is solid and then there's an outer perimeter. And so as long as the mesh that you're looking at describes what could be a physical object, then it's a manifold. Um, and if for whatever reason you're describing an object that doesn't make sense physically, it's non-manifold. So I'm going to select the non-manifold vertices here. And you'll see that there's a whole bunch, a whole bunch of non-manifold vertices. So this problems with this mesh that basically means that it no longer represents a physical 3D object. There's some contradictions or other non-physical things in this, this mesh. So I want to isolate a part here and we'll just take a look at just one part. So I'm going to use the body select tool and I'm going to select one body. There we go. Actually there's a cool way. I'm going to, so I'm going to turn on the layers here. So this is the layers button. And when I turn on layers you can actually right click on a layer and you can do split into its connecting components and what that'll do is it'll individually split each one of these bodies into its own layer and then you can like in independently export each layer you can delete them that sort of thing but there's a lot of parts here and I don't really want to do that I'm just I just want to get one and so I've selected one I'm going to go to filter selection and I'm going to invert this selection now I only have faces selected I don't have vertices selected so if I inverted vertices, I would actually select every vertice here because I, I currently have zero vertices. Oh, that's not true. I have um, I also have uh, all of these non-manifold vertices. It doesn't matter. So anyways, I'm just going to invert faces. Okay, and then I'm going to delete faces that are selected and the vertices that are connected to those faces. And by doing so, I will have isolated a part here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do when I isolate a part is I'm going to save this part. So I'm going to export that mesh as. I'm going to call it uh, testring.stl. I need to change the format to STL here. I'm going to replace the existing one. Alrighty. So okay, then the, what I'm actually going to do because it still says that the the mesh is the old one. I'm going to actually close my workspace and then create a new workspace and then re-import testring.stl so that it recognizes that I am working on a new file. And what that'll do is it'll allow me to click the save and the reload without having to like go through the menus. Alrighty, so I have a single part here. And this part has problems. You can't really see them from the outside, but I'm going to go filters, selection, and I'm gonna select the non-manifold vertices again. Alrighty, and I have 10 non-manifold vertices. There they are, they're all sort of in one line. And if we, so I'm right click, or excuse me, I'm middle clicking and dragging, which allows me to recenter the part. And then I'm panning, which is a click and drag. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this over to our mesh view. And I'm gonna zoom in here. And I'm gonna look at the interior. And you can see what the problem is. And so you can see right this is a non manifold mesh. Um, and so what happened here is Carl designed a straight part. And then the straight part's kind of like a cylinder. It has two end caps. And then Carl told uh, 
SOLIDWORKS to flex that part. It's the flex operation, and Carl told it to flex it into a circle, and Carl joined the two ends together. Now, the problem is that SOLIDWORKS did not perfectly join those two ends together, and so those two end cap faces didn't like cancel each other out. And when the model was exported to STL, it retained some of the internal faces from those two end caps when they were joined together. Now, it doesn't make sense to have internal faces. This is all supposed to be solid because this the mesh describes the outer boundary of the object where everything inside of it is solid. So when you have internal faces in a solid object, you have a, a physical contradiction. And so I've tried for many hours today all sorts of tricks to try to delete these internal faces automatically. And the problem is, is that MeshLab, a lot of the algorithms for like resampling meshes, they assume that the mesh is manifold. And when the mesh is not manifold, you'll often get errors or just crash MeshLab. And so every automatic thing I tried did not work. But fortunately, I actually figured out a way to do it manually. And so I want to show that to you now. So the manual way is it's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to select the internal faces and I'm going to delete them. So what I'm doing is I'm repanning here. Oh, when I so I zoom in with the scroll wheel, right? Zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. Notice how it cut, there's a there's a surface within near the camera that cuts everything off. So when I zoom in, I start cutting off the things. If you hold down Control and you adjust you adjust the scroll wheel, you can actually adjust where faces get cold. And so I'm going to give myself a better view here by doing that. Alrighty, so I'm going to select these. So I go to the rectangular sec tool, and all the triangles in your rectangle get selected. So I'm going to select all the triangles that are problem. And then if you hold down shift, now you're doing an inverse selection. And I'm going to deselect all of the triangles that I don't want selected. Alrighty, now I just have these interior triangles selected. Now, I don't want to delete these triangles with their vertices. I simply want to delete these faces because if you'll, you'll notice, there are no internal vertices. All the vertices are on the surface, but there are internal triangles. So these vertices on the surface are connected to each other when they shouldn't be. So I'm just going to delete the faces. Okay. And now I got to do the other side. So let's pan around and do that. Alrighty, so here's all these internal faces. I'm going to go back to the rectangular suck tool. Okay, and let's actually get them all. Let's make sure we get them all. Alrighty, and then inverse select. Oops, don't want to inverse select stuff I wanted selected. Okay, this is going to get a little bit harder. I could just sort of manually do it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, de I'm going to turn off the selection tool. I'm going to re-pan around so that uh, it's easier, so I get a more vert vertical view. And then I'm going to deselect again and turn off the selection tool. Alrighty. So now I have all of these internal faces deleted. And once again, I'm going to delete the faces, but not the vertices. OK. Now that I've done that, I am going to zoom out here and show you the outside of the mesh. Okay, so what I wanted to do is I need to, I probably want to deselect these vertices temporarily. So filters, select none, and apply that filter. And you, I think you'll notice that there's probably, yeah, alrighty. So see, there are some weird discolorations. These discolorations, are caused by where MeshLab thinks the normals for the faces are pointed. And so light colored faces are where the normals pointed towards the camera. And then dark colored faces are, you know, over here, for example, are where the normals are pointed sort of away from the camera. Um, and the thing is, is MeshLab doesn't seem to recompute these things when as you're doing work. So what I want to do is actually I want to save the mesh on top of itself because I'm working on a, temp a temporary mesh anyways. I save the mesh, and then I'm going to tell MeshLab to reload the mesh, and it'll recompute the normals. Okay, so I just reloaded the mesh. You have to get to refresh the interface by clicking something. And there we go. So I, it just recomputed the normals. So the question is, is, is this mesh fully repaired? 
And the answer is probably no. There are probably still some non-manifold vertices. And so we can zoom in here and we can take a look. And you'll, you'll see some places where, like, here we go. So we've got some, if you look at these triangles, we have some weird stuff going on that doesn't, like there's like a, an additional line. That might be like a non-manifold vertex. Who knows what's going on here? So filters, selection, non-manifold vertices, apply. And we have, according to our selection, three vertices selected. So there are three non-manifold vertices. I'm going to switch back over to this view. And there we go. So we have this vertex, this vertex, and that vertex. So we have three non-manifold vertices. Now, switch back over to this view. There's all sorts of things you could try to do to fix this non-manifold vertex. Who knows exactly what's going on here, but we probably have a vertex that this, what probably is, is this, this edge is probably from that vertex to that vertex. And you're not allowed to have uh, vertices that meet an edge. All vertices have to be incident on other vertices, not on other edges. And that's probably what's going on in all three of these cases, where you probably have a edge that is this vertex to this vertex, and then you have another vertex that's right in the middle of that edge, which violates the manifold rules. So the cool thing is, is if we delete these vertices, so if we click the delete these vertices, all the faces that use that vertex will also get deleted. And we just made some holes in the mesh. Here you'll be able to see them easier. All right, so we have three holes in the mesh. These holes are pretty small, and it should be really easy for MeshLab to close these holes. So let's ask MeshLab to do that. We go to filters. And we go to uh, remeshing, simplification, or reconstruction, and we tell MeshLab to close the holes. The default parameters should work just fine. Hit apply, and there we go. We just got uh, holes closed, and it selected the, cre the faces it created. Now, if we go back over here, you'll see that when it created these faces, it did not recreate that weird diagonal. All of these vertices, they don't look like they're meeting in the middle of edges anymore. It looks like they're all sort of meeting at vertices. So that was probably the problem. Okay, so I'm going to save this mesh. And I'm going to reload it. And I'm going to tell MeshLab to redraw. And we'll switch over here to this view. And I don't see any problems. Let's ask MeshLab if there are any non-manifold vertices. So filter, selection, non-manifold vertices, apply. And our selection has zero vertices, so there's probably no non-manifold vertices at all. I think that we completely fixed this, uh, this particular body. Now, the other thing we can try now that we have a fully manifold surface is you'll notice that there's a ridiculous number of triangles in these curved surfaces over here, completely unnecessary. So now that we have a fully manifold surface, we can do a triangle reduction, filters, remeshing, simplification, reconstruction, do a quadratic edge collapse decimation. Alrighty. Um, it, by default, it cuts it in half, so we go from 13,000 faces to 6,000 faces or 7,000, might as well just tell it. Let's go to 5,000 faces. Um, quality, set the quality to one. Which the quality is in a zero to one uh, scale, so set it as high as possible. Let's preserve the boundary in the mesh. Let's highly weight the boundary so it doesn't change the actual surface because that's what matters when we print it anyways. We don't care about normals or topology. It'll actually maintain those already for us. And then if we hit apply here, we just dramatically simplified the mesh and we didn't actually change the shape. So it might look like it's lower quality, but this the printer resolution is atrocious compared to this. Um, we now have a completely rebuilt mesh with no non-manifold problems. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to tell it to reload. That'll tell MeshLab to recompute everything. And then we'll ask MeshLab one final time, selection non-manifold vertices. Apply that filter. There are no non-manifold vertices. Let's actually ask MeshLab 
uh, selection, select non-manifold edges. There won't be any, but we can try anyways. Apply that filter. And what, MeshLab can't actually select edges, so what it does is it ends up selecting the vertices and the faces that, that own that edge. And again, our selection is zero. So we have now fully repaired a part that had internal faces by manually selecting and deleting those faces. And then the leftover vertices, we, we deleted the leftover vertices and we closed those holes. We probably, if the holes for whatever reason that it created were too big or couldn't be closed or when MeshLab closed them it created other problems, we probably could have gone in precisely and dragged a vertex and moved that vertex along the edge until it went to the end point and then we could have done like a filters and then could have gone a, a cleaning and repairing and we could have told it to um, merge close vertices and it would have snapped those vertices together. So that would have been another option if, if we couldn't just delete and then close those holes. Um, so now we have a portion of a puzzle ring that is fully printable with no errors. Hopefully that made sense. Thanks for watching.